are on the campus of the University of Oregon for the 15th annual Prefontaine Classic Track and Field Meet. Hello everyone, I'm Dwight Stones. And the Prefontaine Classic is an event that has created quite a bit of excitement in the distance races over the last few years. And we have a men's 5,000 meter race tonight that is sure to provide some fireworks with a $5,000 bonus on the line for the winner if he runs under a designated time. Without a doubt, the hottest U.S. runner right now is Joe Falcon. He's been running some very good miles and 1,500 meters lately. He's attempting his first 5,000 meter race tonight since college. We talked to him yesterday about his thoughts coming into this race. Tonight I'm going to be running the 5,000 for the, the first time, uh, seriously. Having run a couple in college, I really didn't have an idea what they're like. And any time you run in a meet like the Prefontaine meet with the, the likes of Doug Padilla and Steve Placencia and the, the rest of them, it's going to be a fast race. And I'm excited because it is my first time doing it, and I don't know what I'm going to run. I don't know how I'm going to run. I know I'll run well because I'm, I'm very fit right now, but uh, I have no idea how the race is going to go. Ideally, my goal is to hang in there through two miles. Because I feel if I can be with the leaders with a mile to go, I should have a good opportunity to win because I'm the fastest over a mile of anyone in the field. America's only gold medalist in the Olympic marathon in the last 82 years. Frank Shorter joins me for the race calls tonight. And Frank, how do you think this 5,000 meter race will develop? I think Joe Falcon is trying to find out if he is a 5,000 meter runner with the Olympics in mind. But he has to deal with Doug Padilla. Joe is the best miler in the country. He's going to have to hang on till at least one lap to go and try to outkick Doug. And you'll be seeing that exciting battle a little later on U.S. Olympic gold, but now it's time to go back to Las Vegas and boxing and Mel Proctor. Hello, everyone. I'm Dwight Stones. And over the years, the Prefontaine Classic has really developed into the premier middle distance and distance event on the U.S. track and field calendar. And tonight's meet is no exception to that tradition. Joining me in the booth for our broadcast tonight is the man who almost single-handedly started the running boom in America, the 1972 gold medalist in the Olympic marathon, Frank Shorter. And Frank, we have a number of strong fields in all of the track events tonight, but without question, the most anticipated clash will be in the men's 5,000 meters. Right, Dwight, and true to the Oregon tradition, all the elements are here. In the 5,000, you have someone to set the early pace. We call him a rabbit. Steve Placencia is a very good 5,000 meter runner who has to run the middle of the race if he can win. Then we have Doug Padilla, who's always been the best 5,000-meter runner in the United States, at least for the past five years. And then Joe Falcon, someone who's moving up in distance, seeing just how well he can run against Doug, probably with the hopes of maybe giving it a try at 5,000 for the Olympic team. Time now for our feature event of the evening, the men's 5,000 meters. The world record holder, Saeed Awida of Morocco, 1258.39 and the American record holder, Sydney Marie, 1301.15. And a huge list of competitors for this race. Most importantly, these three, Doug Padilla, Joe Falcon, and Steve Placentia. You can see the rest of the competitors on your screen, but this is a race that should be between these three individuals. At least that's what most of them have been saying. Doug Padilla, of course, one of the most dominant 5,000-meter runners in this country the last few years. And Joe Falcon moving up to this distance for the first time since he ran it in college. If both of these men will try to go in behind the, the pace setter as the race starts because you don't want to get back in the pack in this kind of race. You want to be right on the inside there. Steve Placencia, very, very good runner, solid runner, lives here in Eugene, doesn't have the speed of Padilla or Falcon. He'll have to take the pace in the middle. And they back off the line. But a little bit of nerves here. Also, there's a $5,000 bonus for going under 1324.86. And you might ask, why that time? Well, the time the deal was made, that was the fastest time in the world in 1990. And now they're off. And Doug Padilla, lane one coming up to the front, bouncing right off his shoulder. But it'll take a little while for this particular field to sift out. Doug does that very well. He goes right to the lead, uses a little bit of his speed to make sure he stays out of trouble, and then we'll let someone else come by. And to the lead, number 118, Paul Donovan. And now, taking over from Donovan, is Matt McGuirk. Matt McGuirk, and he is the designated rabbit for this race. We talked to Doug DePedia a little earlier, and he summed up his thoughts on tonight's race. I, myself, are just going to have to watch really carefully and, and make sure that my move is as good as their move, and I can 
respond whenever anything happens. Um, so the challenge is going to be for, uh, for Steve to get away from us and for the rest of us to stay with him and uh, for us to just hang in there. It's going to be a heck of a race. I'd like to sit down and watch it. It's going to hurt, too. Wow. If they run the kind of race that they're hoping to run, it just might hurt. Doug Padilla, of course, a master at how to manipulate this kind of a race, but he has an unknown element in this, and that's Joe Falcon. After all these great miles and 1500s he's been running in the last few weeks, what is Joe Falcon ready to do? Joe is ready to run under 13 minutes and 30 seconds, and this is the kind of race you can do it in, but the difficulty here is that McGuire, who's the rabbit, may be going the pace he should, but the pack is letting him go. And this isn't what you should do. You have to be up there with that rabbit the whole way. And what this also indicates is a little mental lapse on the part of Padilla and Falcon. They have the ability to be up there in front. They just let the gap develop. All right, we're going to go away from the 5,000 for now with Mac McGurk leading and Paul Donovan oh, following the Paul him. Donovan and then the pack of Steve Placentia, Joe Falcon, Terry Brom, and Doug Padilla in places third through sixth. And they are right around on pace for the $5,000 bonus. Once again, they have to run, the winner has to run under 13.24.86 because that was the leading time in the world for 5,000 meters when that deal was made, which is about a week before the race was run, and they are right about on pace, Frank. This is a little bit more than three miles. In mile terms, McGuirk steps off. He's done his job very, very well. Their first mile was about 418, so they're right on, absolutely right on. And what we thought might happen is happening. Donovan all alone out in front. Steve Placentia, the man who has to push the middle of the race, is now in second place. And Joe Falcon with his wonderfully compact stride. Watch him in third place. Look how efficient he is. He's just like a little sewing machine going by. Boom, 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 boom. He really saves energy. It's very impressive how well his form has developed. But again, Donovan in the lead, doesn't want to be there. Placentia looking good, very good in second and Joe Falcon in third. And we'll be back with the conclusion of this exciting 5,000 meter race when we return. A little less than two laps to go in the men's 5,000 meters and Steve Placentia and Joe Falcon have broken away from Terry Brom, Gerard Gonikowski, and more importantly, Doug Padilla. They appear as though Doug Padilla has been dropped from this particular race. It's going to be between these two men, Placentia and Falcon, the plotter and the kicker. Steve Placentia with three and a half laps to go, just put down his head and drove around the far turn, and they broke Doug Padilla. And Falcon just stayed right with him. Look at Falcon just tiptoeing right behind. Placentia is doing all he can, running a tremendous race. Also, with two laps to go, they had to run about 202 for their last 800 meters to run 13.24. So it's quite possible, especially with the way Joe Falcon looks right now. You have to worry about a guy who keeps looking back over his shoulder, and that's what Placentia is doing. He is looking at Falcon. Falcon, the sewing machine, the man who has been tearing it up in the mile and 1500 the last three weeks, is in perfect position to strike whenever he wants to. If he runs 58 seconds, he's right in there, and he can do it, so he's got to run 57, but he better start pretty soon. Back in third and fourth, Terry Brahm and Doug Padilla. Padilla appears to be too far away from it to get it, but Padilla makes the move to take third. Oh, and look there at Falcon. Falcon! Falcon! Falcon says, no more of this. I'm out of here. I don't know where Padilla is, but I don't trust him. And with 200 meters to go, Falcon is in full flight. Wow! That is impressive. I have not seen leg speed like that in a long, long, long time. Not since Doug Padilla indoors, where he goes from a stride to a sprint. Joe Falcon sprinting down the last 40 meters. Doug Padilla coming up for second. He is now passing people center for second. Joe Falcon, 25 second improvement on his personal best, 1320.47 unofficial. Padilla may have left it. He may have been able to stay with it if they hadn't dropped him with three laps to go. Joe Falcon, 13, 20.4, 54.7, last 400 meters rank. This is a textbook example of someone shifting gears and taking off. Ready for launch. Here we go. Down the back stretch. And again, look how he uses his arms. He doesn't strain at all. He ran 54 seconds for his last 400 meters. 
but he never started to run until about 280 meters to go. This man is going to burn it up in Europe this year. And as the rain begins to fall here at Hayward Field, we have the official results of the men's 5,000 meters. And Joe Falcon with the fastest time in the world in 1990, 1320.49, and more importantly, $5,000 richer. Doug Padilla comes up for second, and Steve Placentia in third. And our Frank Shorter is with the winner, Joe Falcon. Well, Joe, now you've had your first successful attempt at a set up really fast 5,000 meters. How did it go? Well, to be honest, it felt uncomfortable for me until really the last 800. Having been doing mile training, the, the pace felt choppy to me. But then over the last 800, when we started to lift more, then I felt a lot easier, like I was running a mile. Well, you look very smooth us the whole way. Why don't we take a look at that point where you started to feel good, where all of us would really start to feel awful, when you really took off on the back stretch of the last lap. Well, you know, all along I had planned to go with 300 to go. And really, when I took off, I felt very good. It, it was like running the last, say, 200 of a mile. And at this point in time, the crowd was really clapping and getting into it. So I just tried to concentrate on lifting really well. The home straightaway, I really tried to go. And it, here I'm losing form a little bit because I really was trying to go too fast. But for my first series 5,000, I'm very happy for it. I think there's some room for improvement because I haven't done a lot of uh, speed work yet. Well, you're telling me you're just doing intervals up the hill. You haven't done any track speed. Can you get any faster? I, I really believe so. You know, my goal for this summer is to win the TAC meet and to win the Goodwill game in the 1500. I believe I can run 348 for a mile. So when I start to do some intervals, I think I can run a lot faster. Well, I think you're faster than even you think you are. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And as the crowd here at Hayward Field files out, they know they've seen an out standing Prefontaine Classic, the 15th annual, and what a great way to end it with that outstanding 5,000 meter run of Joe Falcon. He thinks he can run 348 for a mile. Imagine if he applies that kind of speed and runs a serious 5,000 in Europe with the kind of pace that those athletes can run there. Should be exciting. We've seen a great meet here in Eugene, Oregon. Topped off by the performance of Joe Falcon in the 5,000 meters. For Frank Shorter and our CBS crew, I'm Dwight Stone. Let's go back to Ernie Johnson in Atlanta.